The delta wing plus canard has become the most common aerodynamic formula for the high performance fighters designed from the 80s onwards. The European triad of Rafale, Eurofighter and Gripen is the leading demonstration. However, it is not universal and there is a reason for that. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss is not found anywhere else on YouTube. So in the 80s, the introduction of relaxed artificial stability has allowed designers to overcome the main problems of the Delta Wing. The Delta Wing had always performed very well, supersonic speeds, but it was difficult to fly and not very efficient at subsonic speed. The problem at subsonic speed is that the high trim drag required to keep the plane in equilibrium. With the relaxed stability, the trim drag drops to zero and almost, and the overall efficiency in terms of lift to drag ratio is better, up to 20% better, 20% than an equivalent conventional configuration. The introduction of canards also allowed to improve the handling and the overall aerodynamic performance, allowing for maneuvers quite difficult to execute with a conventional configuration. So with good performances in the whole speed envelope, excellent maneuverability and a number of other practical advantages, the Delta configuration has become the most popular because of its actual superiority upon the conventional configuration with a tail. So, if Delta Canard is so good, why it is not universal? Why there are modern planes with relaxed stability that still have a conventional configuration? Well, obviously, there is a reason. Well, the simplest and most obvious reason is stealth. The shape of stealth fighter is dictated by the necessity of reducing the rate of cross-section and controlled diffusion effects. Stealth fighters are not designed to be excellent from an aerodynamic point of view and, in general, they can't be. They will always be the result of a compromise between aerodynamics and stealthiness. Yes, I know, the F-22 to achieve its performance actually requires two of the best jet engines ever built and a lot of trust. Uh, while the Delta Wing itself could not be too bad, and in fact the Russians use it on the Sukhoi 57s in terms of stealth, the canards are a big no-no if you want a stealth fighter. <sighs> they just create a powerful reflector. In fact, the Chinese J-20 has four planes, but they are a good reason to doubt about its stealthiness, at least from some angles. The F-16 and F-18 have a relaxed artificial stability, but also have a traditional configuration. Since it was the key factor that made the Delta Wing better on high-performance fighters, it would be expected that both planes might have ended up adopting it. Well, to be honest, they sort of did. Those projects started before European fighters, so the studies on the impact of artificial relaxed stability on the Delta Wing were not as advanced at the time, but the high alpha lift produced by the Delta Wing was, in fact, well known. F-16 and F-18 have an aerodynamic solution called LURX, the acronym for Leading Edge Root Extension. Their aerodynamic surfaces standing forward from the leading edge near the wing root that blend into the fuselage. Their purpose is to generate two vortices at high angle of attack, which produce some extra lift that allows the plane to fly and maneuver when the main wing is near or beyond the stall. This is very, very useful to point the nose of the plane and its weapons in the direction of a potential enemy. Now, if you look at the lurks from above, it becomes clear what they actually are. They are a small delta wing placed before the conventional wing. So, even if the overall configuration is conventional, they make use of one of the advantages of the delta wing. And what about the Russians? 
while the Sukhoi 27 and MiG-29 families still have a conventional configuration. Again, they started to be designed a bit before the European fighters, but still they are extremely advanced planes from an aerodynamic point of view. The path that the Russians followed was different from then that of the Western planes. The Sukhoi 27 and MiG-29 families do not have a well-defined fuselage, which the wing is attached to. They are lifting bodies, where different shapes blend together to provide a seamless performance in the largest possible flight envelope. The Sukhoi 27 family has three pods attached to a central section, whose platform is sort of a delta in the forward section and square toward the tail, uh, complemented by a conventional thin profile wings outboard. The combination and complexity of this solution allows the outstanding high alpha and post tall performance exhibited by this plane. So, while a proper delta wing is not used, the vortex generation idea is used by this plane. Mm. And what about the Chinese? Well, they copied with equal enthusiasm American, European and the Russian solutions. So, well, kudos for keeping an open mind, I suppose. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, I'm sure you will enjoy these other videos here beside me. So, and uh, please like, dislike, subscribe and smash the bell if you want to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.